I got to tell you, Metallica really annoyed me with this one. They really touched on one of my philosophical pet peeves. I hate it when people do this. Let's talk about it. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Riff of the Week. And this week, we're talking about what I like to call meme philosophy. And yes, Metallica has engaged in it. One of the lyrics from their new album, 72 Seasons, and in particular, the song Chasing Light, they do this thing that I just absolutely hate hate when other people do it, so I want to point it out. But before we jump into the criticism, let me just say that my feelings have changed just a little bit on the new Metallica album 72 Seasons since I released that review on it. Let's talk about that real quick. It's a good thing I released that review when I did back then and not now, because now some sentimental things have happened that have changed the way I feel about it, whereas then those were my raw feelings just upon hearing the music and just the way I felt merely hearing the music. And by doing that and by being honest with you all about my feelings, that review did really well and it finally brought the channel over the threshold which allowed us to become YouTube partnered. I've been grinding at this for a few years trying to get that YouTube partnership and I could never quite get past that 4,000 watch hours in a year mark. And so that video that episode is the one that got us over the hump and was finally able to qualify for YouTube partnership. But not just that. It's not just this podcast that gave me sentimental feelings about this album, but also my son bought me the record for my birthday. My son knows I love Metallica. He doesn't know about, you know, Metallica fans not liking the new albums and being old curmudgeons about the old albums. All he knows is dad loves Metallica. Metallica's got a new album. And so for my birthday, he bought me the new album. So between this record finally bringing us over the top and then this just lovely gesture from my son that makes me so proud, I will forever cherish this album. Even though, you know, I don't think it's any of our favorite Metallica album, this one will always hold a special place to me for those reasons. So while I may criticize some of the things inside this album coming up, and while I may have criticized them a little bit in the review, I also gave plenty of praise because I am a Metallica fan. And now I'm biased about it. Now I absolutely love the record. And when I really love something, it can almost do no wrong. But there's one thing that I just can't get over. Well, two things. Y'all already know how I feel about the guitar solos. I don't like the guitar solos on this album. I feel like Kirk could have done a lot better. But, okay, whatever. We've already covered that. We won't beat that dead horse. No, I'm talking about the song Chasing Light. There's one lyric in particular on this song that just drives me up the wall as a philosopher, and it's engaging in something that I like to call meme philosophy. What is meme philosophy, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. Philosophy's hard, y'all. It's something that you have to do all the time for years and years and years, and you never solve any of life's great mysteries. You just keep pondering and studying and pontificating forever. But for some reason, some people, they just think they've got it all figured out all of a sudden. And this is specifically true on social media. You see a lot of people that post these memes with inspirational quotes or trite sayings. Usually there's a picture of the dude from Peaky Blinders or Tom Hardy or worse, the Joker with some simplistic saying that may make you feel good. You know, it, it may touch something on you that resonates, but if you give it more than a few moments thought, you'll realize, oh, that's some fucking bullshit. It's just ex post facto justification for bad behavior. Or just coping with the fact that life sucks sometimes, and no matter how privileged you are, sometimes things don't go your way, sometimes there's disappointments, people inevitably will let you down, and then there's the inevitable heartbreak that you have to deal with. And so people just cope. 
and they post these memes with these sayings that sort of try to make it all make sense. I mean, that's what philosophy is all about, isn't it? We're just trying to make it all make sense and try to figure out how to navigate through this life. One of the worst examples of this, it came about 10 years ago, and we thankfully absolutely destroyed this meme. Back when social media was in its infancy, you used to see a lot of girls posting that Marilyn Manson meme that said something to the effect of, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. And sure, it sounds wise until you think about it for five minutes and it's like, okay, so your worst is clearly you being a bitch and what exactly are you bringing to the table that's your best that makes it worth it for me to deal with you treating me terribly? You know, and that goes both ways. If my wife was to treat me terribly, of course, I don't have to put up with it. And if I was to treat her terribly, she doesn't have to put up with it. What is this awesome thing besides my amazing wiener that I'm bringing to the table that gives me free reign to just be an asshole? That meme was stupid and thankfully we destroyed it. Nobody posts that stupid meme anymore and I wish we could get more victories like that because that's the only meme I can think of that we have destroyed. All those other Joker and Cillian Murphy memes are still plaguing the internet. I mean, this one's one of my favorites, loyalty over everything. And again, when you first read that, it makes sense. It, it resonates with something inside of you like, yeah, loyalty over everything, over everything, really? I'm pretty loyal to my friends and my family, but it ain't loyalty over everything. There is a plethora of things that my friends and family could do that would instantly lose my loyalty. And there's things that they could not do that would also lose my loyalty it's not this simplistic thing where people are owed respect or loyalty. Respect and loyalty is earned. Nobody owes you anything. And I'm so sick of these simplistic memes as a substitute for a life's philosophy, as a substitute for principles and morals. It's just, just be honest. Somebody did something that disappointed you and you wanna post something passive aggressive. I mean, look at this Peaky Blinders bullshit. When a nice guy loses his patience, the devil shivers. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, that sounds real great until you think about it. If the devil shivers when you get impatient about one of life's disappointments, are you really a nice guy? No, you're not. You were a nice guy when you thought you had something to gain. See, that's what I mean. Just because something seems to resonate in the moment because you're emotional doesn't mean it's actually wisdom or philosophy. And without darkness, there's no light. I hate that lyric so much. It's the thing that I hate the most on this album. It's, this album is full of tremendous riffs and great songwriting and structure and fun moments and just so many things that I could praise. And then there's a couple of little things that just bother me a little bit, but it's really no big deal even the guitar solos. But that line, that line right there, it makes me where I can never like the song Chasing Light. I hate that line so much. Without darkness, there can be no light. I... So first of all, let's just get out of the way the insufferable nerd, well, actually part of this. What is darkness? Well, darkness is by its definition, the absence of light. So if we are without darkness, then that means there's a shitload of light. Light is not created by the darkness. Where does this idea come from? It comes from this notion that there's balance in the world and there's a yin and a yang and we need the bad to appreciate the good and there is no good without a little bit of bad. And then of course our human brains, we just like things like alliteration. We really resonate with things like opposites attract and synonyms and acronyms and onomatopoeia. All of those things touch something inside of us that makes it seem wise when all it really is is a trick of language. That's what without darkness, there is no light is. It just is a trick and I hate it. At best, this thought is trying to make sense of a world that makes no sense because it's 
full of despair and evil. And at best, it's... There is no best. The suffering that's taking place in Yemen right now is not to make us appreciate our middle class lives over here. It's because there's evil men in this world that run the world and there's not enough people that care about it to stop them. That's it. It's not there is no darkness without light or no light without darkness or you got to have the bad to have the good or... You know, you need ugly to appreciate the beautiful. All this is just coping with the fact that the world is a harsh and careless place and it's full of evil human beings that take advantage of simpleton philosophy like that. Now, I want to be clear. I don't want this to be the just bash on Metallica episode. Again, I said it. I like this album and it's Especially given the circumstances, I've got a sentimental reason to be biased towards it. It's just this one particular lyric that I can't get over. Overall, 72 Seasons is probably one of the most philosophical albums that Metallica has released since And Justice For All, my favorite Metallica album, because it's about the first 18 years of your life and how that molds you into the person you're going to be. Do you ever really get over those first 18 years? I don't know. It's a mystery that probably philosophy will never solve. You know, and that is so admirable to tackle, especially in their veteran careers when they could just do whatever they wanted and make a lot of money to still want to tackle a difficult subject like that and make meaningful art. I really respect Metallica. I'm not trying to take a big dump on them. I'm not trying to join the bandwagon of Metallica haters. Just honestly, personally, that line drives me crazy. As a philosopher, I hate that whole, well, you got to have balance in all things. And, you know, it just reeks of God moves in mysterious ways and other nonsense sayings. I don't have it all figured out. I'm just trying to make it through this life like everybody else. But I'm pretty sure that there's no cosmic scales of justice that is being weighted by mysterious forces and balances out all the good and evil in the world. There's no karma. Nobody's going to get what's coming to them. There's evil men with power doing exactly what they want to do and nobody to stop them. That's the reason why there's bad in the world because human beings are selfish and they act in their own self-interests and... Supply will never meet human demand, so they just lie, cheat, and steal, and murder, and act selfishly, and disappoint you in your relationships, because nobody can live up to your perfect expectations. You don't need to post passive-aggressive memes with Celia Murphy's face on it. And for God's sakes, don't post the Joker meme, where you lament how society calls it being rude and you're just a truth teller really and Sharon posted her selfie with her best friend and you go in the comments and talk about their physical appearance are you really being a truth teller no you're being rude and when people call you on it it's not society being soft it's you being soft because you can't handle being called on it because you have no social grace you have no social intelligence You just say whatever comes to your mind or you're a little troll or whatever it is. You're not wise. You're not a truth teller. You're not some profound joker that's going against the grain of society. This is all mean philosophy where you haven't had any thought into it whatsoever. But you see this little saying with Joaquin Phoenix on it and it makes you feel good. Now don't get me wrong. I know that I'm preaching to the choir, the heavy metal philosophy audience is brilliant and wise and positive, and I know that y'all aren't the type of people to post this crap. I know you all have seen it too if you're on social media, especially if you've got family members on social media. For some reason, our uncles and cousins are the worst about this. I don't understand why, but I just, I'll, I'll stop beating the dead horse I'm just letting y'all know that that sort of thing drives me crazy and that's why I ranted about it and I just appreciate all of you for, I've seen your comments, you guys are killing it out there. Philosophy's hard work, it takes a lot of sitting and thinking and reading 
and memes just don't cover it. So now that that rant's done, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Let's get back on topic. Okay, so like I was saying, darkness is the absence of light. Darkness doesn't create light. You don't need darkness to appreciate light. Darkness is merely the absence of light. What is a shadow? It comes from something blocking the light. If you put something in front of the light, behind it is cast a shadow. Shadows are not the balance of the light. It comes from some asshole blocking the light. Don't be that asshole blocking the light. Get out of the way of the light, and then we don't have to have darkness to have light. Do I not believe in balance? That's, well, really, no, I don't. What do I mean by that? Well, for instance, I often talk about how I have four jobs. I work a lot. I get up, I go to work, I come home, I work out, I work on the farm, then I work on Metal Digest and Heavy Metal Philosophy stuff. I work from the time I get up until it's dark every single day. Some people might call me a workaholic and they would say, you need to take a vacation for balance. And yes, every now and again, I need to just watch a movie go to the beach with my family, read a book that's not for the show. Yes, but it's, what is the ratio of that? Is it 50-50? Certainly not. Certainly it's not 50-50. What is it? It's arbitrary. Balance is this arbitrary notion. I should relax the amount of time that I need to relax to not get burned out and to still put out good work and be happy with my life and serve the needs of my family. That's how much I should relax. And in my opinion, for the type of life that I want to have, that's the only amount that I should relax. Somebody else that wants different things out of their life, they may want to relax more than that. It's not a matter of balance. It's completely arbitrary. And that's just a mundane thing like work. What about morals? Do I believe in balance when it comes to morals? Absolutely not. I don't get to be a bad guy for you to appreciate the good things that I've done or, you know, I've done some good things that doesn't justify the bad things that I've done. Or I don't need for people around me to do bad things for me to appreciate the good people in my life. No, just fuck those bad people. Bottom line, end of discussion. My friend, Mr. Garcia, really said it best. We were talking about this notion of balance and he thought, no, you shouldn't chase balance. You should chase what's appropriate. And on that, I agree. So there's this notion in the manosphere that men should be dangerous. This is clickbait. Men should be capable, right? And if it's appropriate, to be a protector or to accomplish something, then by all means. But when it's not appropriate, it's not appropriate ever. I know that I'm inevitably going to get some pushback on this and I actually look forward to it because I, I would be interested to hear a challenge on what I think is you should act appropriately and not balanced. I mean, really, what? Where are you going to challenge me on that one? I want to know. Or maybe there will be some challenges from some Metallica diehards. And I accept that too, because I'm a Metallica diehard. There might be somebody who goes, no, this is actually profound, bro. No, there's a lot of profound stuff on 72 seasons. Chasing light ain't one of them. Sleepwalk my life away, too far gone, room of mirrors. Those are great profound songs. But chasing light... Well, it'll just always bother me. It will forever be a skip whenever I listen to this record. It's just one of my philosophical pet peeves. As you can tell, if you've made it this far through all of my ranting, without darkness, there's no light. I also wrote about this in my monthly column for Metal Digest, and I wouldn't normally uh, double dip like this. I would normally keep that content over there and this content over here, but I felt the need to do this because... When I did that Metallica review, the episode was like an hour long when I first recorded it and I edited it down to that 20 minutes or however long it wound up being because I spent so much time critiquing and praising some of the lyrics on that album and it just got really long and rambly and I especially went on a tangent about this song and I just knew that one day I was going to publish that tangent and here we are 
that article in Metal Digest was actually supposed to come out then, and that was gonna satisfy both needs for me, but things have been shaken up around here lately, so now we're doing it now, and I'm glad, because I needed an episode this week. So that leads me to this week's Riff of the Week to close out the episode. This week's Riff of the Week, and it will certainly be the one and only time I ever pick this song, is of course, Chasing Light. Now, if it wasn't for that lyric, there's some riffs on this song that I would like. There's some riffs on here that's just, that's one of those riffs that only Metallica's gonna write. And I dig the riffs. I, of course, Hetfield's tone is amazing. It's just that lyric ruins the whole thing for me. And anyway, let's just, let's just find a spot where there's just a riff and no lyric. We'll make that the riff of the week. But I need to know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Especially if you disagree with me. Or maybe there's a subtle nuance that I missed. That would be even more impressive. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're listening audio only, then you can just hit me up on social media. All the links are in the description. No problemo. If you're on YouTube, you can click right here and catch another great episode of Heavy Metal Philosophy, probably in the Philosophy of Metallica playlist that I created. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you.